all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so the discussion today is about the drug from japan shionogi is the company they have a drug which is um ancitri ancitril vir that drug is actually a 3cl pro or m pro inhibitor this is very similar to paxlovid as well um i could not find the trial data other than what company had reported in their own press releases and news releases but still very very interesting drug and let's look at it it is possible that if this is approved it's not yet approved in japan it has been submitted for approval but it is possible that when it is approved this will be an over the counter drug like flu or other things you can get drugs over the counter in japan and it would be for 12 years and over regardless of the type of uh, covid intensity for example paxlovid says 12 years and above who may have a risk of becoming severe they would get paxlovid this drug will be for anyone above 12 years of age who may even symptoms does not matter if they are positive or whatever is their way of saying that you have covid they will be able to get this drug if approved so let's look at this so these are our um gifts for humanity which will continue just very quickly let's look at the references this is drbean.com if uber affordable price plan only for youtube audience is in the description of this video this these are a bunch of references here the most interesting one are these shionogis and i will go over those one by one and because i could not find the side effects released in a press release somewhere by shionogi i'm going to piggy back on paxlovid side effect however of course it's not necessary that they would exactly be the same so with this let's start i think you'll you like the little diagrams today as well so shionogi's covid-19 drug it is code named s217622 ancidril vir it is they have filed it for approval from japan's pharmacy and medical devices agency or pharmaceuticals and medical devices agency summary of the drug is the following it is an oral drug will be over the counter it is a 3cl or m pro inhibitor that is an enzyme within the sars cov2 and many other viruses as well and this enzyme helps initiate the sars cov2 proteins and it it kind of snips them and starts the replication process so it is very important for the viral replication and i would explain that a little later here is just a summary and so if you inhibit this enzyme then you reduce the viral replication which then allows the immune systems and the cells to overcome the virus and clear it out quickly so it, it has the mechanism that is the same as paxlovid Exlovid has actually one extra drug in that as well this does not have two drugs so let me modify my statement it has a mechanism that has partly the same uh, properties as paxlovid paxlovid has one extra antiviral in it as well which this drug does not have now it does not need freezing and the results that you are going to see in japan you can do this that if you are going through the phase 2 and 3 trials you can pick up some data and then use that as a rolling or conditional approval so the result that we would see are from the phase 2b of an ongoing trial of which is phase 2 and 3 trial so this will be a conditional approval that the condition will be that the phase 2 3 trials come back with positive outcome for the time being the data that we are going to see that data is from 428 individuals now it is kind of a mixture 
of good and bad. I think there is some good in here as well. Of course, that is why they applied for approval. But there are some not so good parts as well. So first one is this, that they had as a end point, they had 12 symptom sets that they had said that this drug would help against those 12 symptoms. I could not find that clinical trial to go and read that number of symptoms. However, for these 12 symptoms, this drug was not able to significantly create a difference between placebo and those who were receiving the drug. So the company themselves say that the endpoint was not met. So if I go back here, so if you see here, clinical symptoms improvement, no significant difference in the time weighted average change in the total score of 12 COVID-19 symptoms from initiation of administration up to 120 hours while they change in the direction of improvement. And they say in this bracket, primary endpoint not achieved. So that is a um, sort of not the best thing that happened. On the other hand, if you take out of those 12 symptoms, if you take five symptoms, which are respiratory symptoms, for example, stuffy or runny nose, sore throat, cough, shortness of breath. And these are four, but runny nose and stuffy nose are two. So four or five. If you take these respiratory um, symptoms, then there was significant difference between placebo and this drug. So that is how it became significant. That is one. Secondly, if you looked at the viral clearance, then this drug also had a very good result. And what was that result? When this drug was given, it I think it is two or three doses, but when it was given at the third dose, by fourth day, 80% of the patients did not have the virus anymore. So that's a very, very interesting uh, outcome. So by fourth day, when this drug was given compared to placebo, 80% of the patients didn't have virus or the white virus titer had become undetectable. Um, and at the sixth day, at the sixth day, 100% of the patients did not have the viral titers that were detectable. That's, that's pretty good. So then you can say that, hey, then why are the remaining symptoms still carrying on? And we know that the COVID especially causes immune system to become triggered as well. And many of the symptoms are because of the immune system. So maybe this drug is able to quickly get the virus out of the way, but the immune system is still dysregulated and there are some symptoms related to immune system's responses, which are still continuing. But this is pretty good that by four day to sixth day, virus is gone. And other good news is that it covers Delta and Omicron. So these trials are being done nowadays or in recent times. Because of that, it covers Delta and it covers Omicron. So these efficacies you're seeing are on the most recent variants. So that's the good news. Now the red flag. This red flag actually caused the company's stock to go down as well. And then company had to actually publish a response. This became so bad. So let me first tell you what was the red flag. The red flag is that in their safety and efficacy non-clinical part of the trial, which may be phase one and phase two trials, early trials, in the non-clinical part of the trial done last year, they found out that there is a tendency for this drug to call fetal, fetal inside the mother, baby, developing baby, fetal skeletal morphological abnormalities, uh, fetal bone production abnormalities. So of course that is a, that is very concerning and the company then, I'll, I'll read their response, they said that, hey, we are actually not um, offering this drug for pregnant women or might be pregnant women or lactating 
women it is not for them so number one when this news came out their stock went down i think 16% then they came out and they said this is not a new news we had declared it to healthcare authorities on december 2021 then we also put it in documentations the some nda documentations on feb 2022 and this is not a new news and this is not applicable because pregnant women lactating women or maybe pregnant women are actually not supposed to take this drug so i want to quickly read that part so here is the shionogi pre- presents phase 2 3 clinical trial results and then actually yeah so notice regarding the media coverage about this drug a therapeutic drug for covid-19 so as you can see they have actually given a lot of explanation but what is interesting here is that they're saying this is not a new information it was already provided and as i said on april 6 they said we reported it and then we reported it on december um on april 6 they responded and they said that this information was given in december 2021 and in feb as well and if you see here based on the above shionogi believes that the matter would not affect the decision for approval of this drug we will continue to cooperate with the pmda review in parallel with progressing the clinical trials currently underway to collect further information on safety and efficacy and i believe that they alluded over here that in their trial there are no pregnant women or there are no lactating women or there are no maybe pregnant women so this was something that kind of uh, became a concern for them enough concern that they actually came out and responded to it now before i go to details this is it for the summary so the summary is it is a drug that reduces the virus replication the primary endpoint of affecting 12 symptoms was not met if you take five symptoms as the respiratory symptoms then it had significant statistically significant data to show that it helped it cleared the virus or the virus became undetectable it was so low in numbers within 4 days in 80% of the people who were taking it and 100% cleared within 6 days the side effects are still not known so i'm going to read some packs of which side effect in a bit and then the uh, effect on pregnancy they say that this is not a drug for them so that is yes that is a side effect that they acknowledge but that is also not important at this time because this is not a drug for pregnant women so still under review if it is if it will become available it will become an over the counter drug for someone who suspects covid or has symptom or does not have symptom it will be 12 years and above and it would it would not have this need that one must have the the chance of becoming severe for example comorbidities it and anybody can take it so that is the drug so that's the summary i'm going to go in the details now in the detail i want to go over the mechanism once more for how 3 cl pro inhibitors work so here we have a diagram and imagine this is cell and there is some nucleus somewhere as well and we have just taken a part of the cell membrane here is the virus Uh, SARS-CoV-2, it is connecting here with the ACE2, and we know the next thing that this is going to go, get into the cell. So here the virus would break open, and the messenger RNA will be released from the virus, the genetic code. This genetic code is a positive sense messenger RNA. That means for the healthcare students and professionals, this RNA can directly be picked up by ribosomes, and the ribosomes can directly start working on it we do not have to make complements of it so the messenger rna will attach to ribosomes and the proteins for this virus will start getting formed now the proteins there are two big proteins that are formed first those big proteins that are formed pp 
one and PP2, I believe, or one A and one B. These two big proteins have smaller proteins embedded in them that need to be sliced out. And these smaller proteins are enzymes that would help build new viruses. So what happens is there are two proteins. One is the NSP3 protein. So we know that in the viral genome, there are non-structural protein forming parts, open reading frames. So for us, just this much is sufficient to say that there is a non, there are many non-structural protein parts. NSP3 is an enzyme called PL Pro and NSP5. This NSP5 is important. If you forgot everything today, you should just remember NSP5 because this drug that we're talking about will attack NSP5. NSP5 is another part of the protein which is also an enzyme. That enzyme is called 3CL or MPRO. This enzyme's function, 3CL or MPRO's function, is to cut down the remaining part of the big proteins to create small enzymes. And I always give this example that imagine you have a, um, you buy these sticker sheets for children and they have horses and cows and hippos and giraffes drawn on them. And the child can actually just peel out one little hippo from it, from that sheet. So imagine this is that sheet and you need to cut out the small enzymes, which in themselves are monsters and they're going to help this virus to become replicated. And these two big AMA proteins <laughs> would have these enzymes that would cut them up. So anyways, 3CL or MPRO or NSP5 is the protein which this drug attacks. Paxlovid, Paxlovid is actually a combination of two drugs. One part of the Paxlovid also attacks the same enzyme. So in that way, they are kind of similar. So once those enzymes are broken up into smaller pieces, then they would use our cell's machinery to then further make more baby viruses or daughter viruses, and those viruses would then get out. So of course, if you block NSP5 or 3CL or MPRO, then you will be reducing the viral replication. And if that replication is reduced and the same cell may be able to take care of it and the cells around will be able to take care of it, plus there may not be sufficient number of viruses to come out and go to the other cells because in the other cells, the same drug will also be present. And so the virus would really have a hard time replicating. So that is a mechanism. I had drawn this mechanism in Paxlovid as well. And because I really love my diagram, although I drew it, I love it. So I took a snapshot and brought it here as well. So when I did Paxlovid, I talked about this one. So in the background here, this is the, um, those proteins, the big proteins. And if you see here, this is the MPRO or 3CL Pro, and this is PL Pro. These are the two enzymes that we just saw. These enzymes are cutting up the remaining proteins to make small monsters who, who are going to help the uh, virus replication. And while that is happening, this is the 3CL Pro. And here, in the case of Paxlovid, there is Nirmatrilvir. That is the Paxlovid drug that is trying to kill the or block the 3CL Pro. So in case of this drug today, what we are talking about is n citrilvir drug, which would also do the same thing. Now, Paxlovid also have ritonavir in it, which blocks this guy, and that is not present with this Japanese drug. So this is the basic drug mechanism. Now let's look at some of the references, especially I wanted to go over the Paxlovid's uh, Number one, contraindications. So Paxlovid, of course, anybody who has allergies, they're not allowed to take it. And then if you see here, these are the drugs that if you are taking these drugs, then you're not allowed to take it. Or if you have these conditions, here are the side effects. So the first part of the side effect for Pax Paxlovid, this is not for the drug that we're talking about. They are similar. That's why I'm bringing up this so number one is the set of uh, side effects. These are allergic reactions. Then liver problems. Then resistance to HIV. 
and then other possible side effects altered sense of taste diarrhea high blood pressure muscle aches and there may be more so these are the kind of side effects although reports that i read they said that side effects were not concerning what were the side effects i have still not been able to find them once i find them i'll show them to you so this now wraps up the details as well let's very quickly look at what we have in the references so this is a coronavirus biology and replication so this replication is what i mentioned this is the 3cl pro molecular structure so if you are someone who is interested in understanding this molecule i have the link in there with this structure in it this is the the those big proteins and how they are broken down by the pln 3cl then these are shionogi's various reports there is a report from them on feb 25 then there is a report from them on april 13 then this is a little more about this drug uh, i liked it this is in nih and this is end central vir and that drug's molecule and its structures and its uh, properties this is another article which is really good. I like this article too. Then some more articles about this drug and we are done. So what a good job, 22 minutes. So <laughs> please do me a favor, like, subscribe and share. That is the easiest thing you can do. And if you would like to um, buy access to this kind of lectures, then there is a link in the description that has the most affordable price ever for any medical education. And that price you would be surprised. So take advantage of that. Link is in the description. And if you would like to support this work that I'm doing, if you like this work, then you can buy me a coffee or you can use PayPal to support this work or you can become a patron or Substack. I would really love if we can increase patrons, even if it is $5 per month and Substack. Uh, uh, paid members so that I can continue to wean off of YouTube. That is my mission. I need to get off of the YouTube dependency. And so thank you very much. I hope that this uh, provided some data. And there was a lot of data that is in various articles and it just needed to be pulled together. I still could not find the side effects. So we'll talk about them when I find them. Thank you very much. I would also recommend on my channel, watch Paxlovid 2, because that was also created with lots of love and that is also with the similar mechanism. So with this, I'll see you on the Chit Chat channel in a few minutes.